today we are going to start uh, the library of a Spark port that is called the Spark Stream, and uh, we will see that uh, this particular library uh, is used for uh, performing the real time uh, computations, and uh, which is helpful for real time analytics. So this uh, Spark streaming uh, also is called uh, the fast data because uh, the data as it is uh, arriving, the computation has to be performed on it. So, so, so this will add the fast data to also form it as uh, uh, the fresh data. Uh, these operations are performed on the fresh data. So, uh, Spark streaming uh, will take uh, will consider the data uh, as it is uh, generated out of the source. Uh, it will not store and then use it, but it will on the fly perform the operation. Therefore, it is called real time analytics. So, the fresh data uh, is considered in Spark streaming and the operations are being performed. It is also called fast data because uh, the, the pace in which the data is coming uh, from various sources. Uh, uh, is, is quite fast, uh, quite fast. So, so this uh, is also called a fast data. So, let us see uh, here uh, uh, in this particular discussion about this technology, how it can be used for real time analytics, and we will see the application that is uh, in the smart city, how, how this uh, smart screen can be helpful. So uh, there are two types of uh, processing. One is called batch processing, which you were seeing earlier uh, in, the, in the previous uh, impressions. Uh, and uh, a new type of uh, processing today we are going to cover, that is called stream process. In the batch processing, you have seen that the uh, ability to process and analyze the data at rest, that means the data is in the form of the stored data. So, so stored data file uh, will be read and then you have uh, uh, means, uh, allowed your program to read and uh, process and analyze the result. So this batch processing is a request base and uh, is based on the bulk evaluation that is the, the data is very huge, it is stored on, on the systems, the top of SDFS. And uh, this is a uh, very short lived processing. Uh, I, it is the batch processing is the enabler for retrospective, reactive, and on-demand analytics. On the other hand, uh, you have the stream processing, uh, uh, which has an ability to ingest. So ingest means uh, the data as it is uh, generated from the source. So so capturing that uh, data which is uh, generated by the source for ingest. So, ability to ingest the data out of various sources, process the data and analyze the data in the motion. So, data is in the motion. So, data is not at the rest like in batch processing, stream processing, data is in the motion. We also call it as a fresh data or, or the fast data. And you have to do this uh, entire 
processing and analyzing in the real time or or near real time what do you mean by near real time near real time we mean that this particular data will contain the event for example uh, the sensors are reading uh, the traffic uh, which is flowing in, into a particular city or let us say that uh, uh, is not building in the smart city there is a building and there is a fire break uh, into the building so that fire break will become an event so this particular event uh, is to be captured so stream processing will perform the event uh, processing or it is also called a micro batch driven micro batch driven means uh, it is a stream of data which is coming so a stream means uh, you see the water which is flowing from a pipe uh, similarly, if you, if you think that the uh, data is flowing out of a pipe, it's called a stream. But if you chop the, the, the flow uh, into the pieces, then it is called batching or micro batches. And uh, so this particular stream uh, of data, when it is coming, uh, it is, it is uh, chopped into the micro batches. And this particular micro batches has to be computed instantly so that the next micro batch will come and will also attend. The computation so hence it is a, a stream processing is an event or a micro batch driven continuous evaluation and a long lived processing so the processing is never going to end why because the data keeps on coming uh, as it is ingested unlike in, in, a, in a batch processing it is a short lived processing that means once your data is read you have done the analysis your program is so where in the stream processing it is for example in smart city application the data keeps on being generated out of the sensors and uh, at every time it is being processed similarly for the smart meters the data is uh, continuously being uh, being generated out of the smart meter and the computations are being performed so stream processing is, is is having its capabilities that is it is an event based processing it is a micro batch driven it is a continuous evaluation it is a long lived process so stream processing is an enabler for real time perspective of uh, of the observation of, of the objects which are under the observation proactive and predictive predictive analytics for the next best action so therefore out of this batch processing and stream processing so the batch processing is done in the real time uh, immediately when the data is being generated it has to be processed understood what is inside <coughs> Whereas the batch processing uh, is based on the historical data, that is the past data. Normally, if you say data analytics, all data analytics which comprises of both batch processing as well as, well as stream processing, batch processing we have already seen in the Spark SQL. And uh, here we are going to see the uh, stream processing for the real time engine. Therefore, uh, the modern data application approach has two different type of analytics one is called traditional analytics uh, 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 which is uh, uh, and the other type of analytics which is called uh, the new generation analytics so traditional type of analytics uh, is uh, based on the data uh, which is uh, 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 which will built into the store and uh, then uh, the data uh, will be given uh, will be analyzed and a model will be created out of that model the, uh, the, the queries will be, will be answered. Wherein the next generation analytics uh, 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 when, when the data is being presented it is being analyzed and explored uh, for, uh, for, for various uh, queries and, and the new queries uh, whatever is being uh, predicted uh, so, so the data will be or the model will be prepared to answer Based on the based on the new queries, uh, new queries uh, which were uh, which were not prepared that data earlier in the traditional analytics. Hence, new generation analytics more versatile uh, in the sense that uh, the queries it has not seen uh, the the system automatically can can learn and and can can, uh, uh, can can provide that queries. This is called new generation analytics. But new generation analytics is uh, real time analytics. Uh, this we are going to see uh, as part of it that's called stream, the Spark streaming. So let us see the Spark streaming with that background uh, uh, of motivation.
uh, for various applications to support Spark experience is being provided as per its libraries, library is concerned. So let us see the Spark streaming. So Spark streaming uh, is, is uh, an extension of Spark Core API. Uh, so uh, and uh, uh, we have seen the, in the previous slides, in the previous uh, lectures uh, of this uh, positioning of uh, uh, Spark streaming, which is uh, which is uh, running as an uh, extension of uh, Spark Core API. Now, uh, Spark streaming is processing the live data streams, uh, that is, uh, which are scalable, uh, which are having high throughput and fault tolerant. These are some of the features which are which are there in, in the live data streams. Now, these live data streams or data sources uh, uh, are generated out of uh, these uh, different data ingestion systems that is either through a Kafka or through a Flume or through SDFS, uh, that is the data you stored, but you are now reading it, or from Kinesis, that is the tool, data ingestion tool, of, which is popularly used in AWS or Amazon. So, once the data is, uh, is, is uh, ingested, uh, out of this uh, uh. so data uh, this is the procedure of data ingestion and data when it is ingested uh, so so it, it will form the, the live data streams. So live data streams uh, are being uh, are being given to the Spark streaming system. Now the Spark streaming system uh, will will take this uh, stream of data, divide it into the batches, uh, into the batches. That is, if it is a live stream, and uh, dividing the batches means uh, you, you chop this particular data into into the small pieces. So these are the small pieces of the data. They are called they are called micro batches. So as the data is coming, you keep on chopping after some time, and it becomes a batch processing, and it becomes the batches. And these batches are nothing but they, they become the RDDs. Uh, and uh, the Spark is taken after batching. That means it will it will give the, the uh, RDDs uh, to the Spark core, and Spark core will, will compute it. So uh, Spark streaming has uh, the, the functions like uh, like map, uh, reduce, uh, join, and uh, join by key, uh, and windowing operations. A lot of windowing operations that join by key is a windowing option that we are going to see here by Spark streaming. Uh, after after performing these uh, operations, uh, computations or analysis on this data stream, uh, the, the the result will be stored in the uh, in either the SDFS uh, that is. Uh, or the storage or on the databases or in some databases or, or it can be uh, shown on the on the visual dashboard so so again uh, uh, here uh, at the at the heart we are seeing at the spark streaming and the spark streaming is, uh, is nothing but an uh, api of the spark port So this will become an API of a Spark port, and uh, Spark streaming will now uh, uh, will, will finally uh, turn into the into the, uh, into the results. So the data is keeps on flowing uh, continuous basis, and uh, it will filter and it will analyze, and and the result will be stored on, on the on the uh, on these uh, different output uh, devices. So uh, let us see that uh, Spark streaming, uh, the input uh, data stream that we have seen is being ingested out of uh, Kafka and there are various sources. Uh, so so, uh, so the input data stream uh, is given uh, to the Spark streaming and Spark streaming will, will turn into the batches uh, of that input data. These batches is nothing but the RDDs and Spark engine as you already know that 
will will process these RDDs. So uh, so these batches of input data will be will be computed on the fly with, with the Spark engine. So obviously all these batches after reading the input data is streamed, they are there uh, in the in memory operations has to be supported here by the Spark engine. So it will be computed very fast here by the Spark. Now, uh, Spark Streaming uh, provides, uh, just like Spark uh, Core provides uh, RDDs, uh, the basic uh, uh, high-level abstraction of the data. Spark Streaming provides the high-level abstraction which is called a D-stream, that is called discretized uh, streams. So, discretized streams called D-streams in Spark Streaming is a high-level uh, abstraction uh, that is representing the continuous stream of the data. And uh, uh, these are all internally represented as a sequence of RDDs. Uh, so the operations uh, which are applied on D streams will translate uh, to the operations uh, on the underlying RDDs. So, for example, uh, these RDDs uh, which are divided into the into the into the batches, uh, uh, in, and that is called D streams. Uh, so, so these D streams uh, uh, will will be generated. Uh, during that particular different timing, uh, as the time flows, this particular data will be uh, will be passed and will be sent, and they are called these streams, and, and the operations will be applied. As far as our streaming is concerned, uh, so it defines various uh, operations that we will see. One such operation, uh, sorry, operation is one such transformation is called flat map. Uh, which is a part of these stream operations. So, so flat map operation uh, is when it is applied on the on the on the stream uh, on the live stream uh, line, which is also called a D stream, uh, which is uh, the name of the variable. Let us say it is a line. So, when the lines are appearing uh, between a particular time and a flat map uh, operation is applied, flat map will, will convert the line into the words. So that you can see that uh, for every line uh, which is uh, which is a D stream is converted using flat map into the set of words uh, for that specific lines and the operations will be will be performed on these words. They are nothing but the RDDs and and as part of the the computation. So the live stream is is being broken and they are called uh, D streams and for the D stream different uh, operations which are supported. Uh, in a Spark streaming uh, that you will see in the assignment. So uh, this will be performed just like you have seen uh, in the Spark board. So uh, Spark streaming, uh, besides map, reduce, and join, it also provides window operations uh, uh, in, in a Spark streaming. So windows means uh, that the streams. Uh, it will it will apply the transformation or sliding window of the data. So that means as the data moves, uh, so so the, either you can think of the data which is moving or you can think of the window which is sliding over the data. Let us say that you want to compute uh, uh, the transformation uh, operation which is called a rolling average. If if your if your output if your uh, if your task is to find out the rolling average. Uh, of a particular uh, sense of reading, uh, then uh, you can apply this uh, particular sliding window over this data stream. Uh, so that data, so so you just see that uh, uh, D streams uh, will will uh, will convert. So so a particular window will have more than one D stream. So so this particular uh, window uh, will calculate every window will calculate one average and this rolling average will be calculated as the data moves uh, slides or the, the window slides over the data and uh, this is called windowed uh, de streaming operation so in the in, in the last line you can see here the, the code for this uh, if you want to find out the rolling average uh, over the data stream and uh, you have to reduce uh, after every 30 seconds of the data and every 10 seconds you have to refresh. So that you can uh, you, you can mention here uh, in this operation which is uh, the transformations uh, in a spark streaming that is uh, the reduce by key and window operation which is there. So uh, within that window, it will it will compute the, the rolling averages A and B, and uh, that is computed after every 30 seconds. And 
at every 10 seconds the window will be refreshed and uh, you have to do uh, this particular uh, finding or the routing uh, average is, is the word count window based word count program it's very simple and you just see that one line is good enough uh, to support so this is called window based programming and which is going to, uh, to analyze the, 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 the live stream of the data using uh, the window based operation supported by the spark stream now uh, we are going inside and seeing that uh, this uh, is data streaming or streaming data has different challenges. First of all, consistency. So what do you mean by this uh, challenge? Consistency uh, challenge is there because, uh, for example, the data uh, it is arriving. So that means uh, the the input is split uh, screen, which is in batches is divided to the batches. And uh, yeah, this particular, that means uh, they have uh, this sequence numbers in which uh, this computation has to be performed and uh, uh, reached uh, to these particular sites. Now these uh, data streams, uh, bit, uh, uh, discretized streams, that is called D streams, that is called uh, uh, the, the streaming data which is divided into the batches. They are being computed at different uh, nodes of the cluster. Now the thing is when, when uh, you perform the operations, these, these computation has to be performed at different nodes. But but final result has to be uh, computed when all these uh, uh, streams, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, they are being connected, uh, they are results in that form. Or the data which is arrived uh, should come in this particular form or sequence. So if it is not, for example, uh, uh, after one, the, the data number three has arrived, then four has arrived, but two is arrived late. So, so, so this will create the problem in the consistency. So consistency has to be uh, a major problem here, implementation uh, aspect that you don't have to worry that we are telling you about uh, what are the challenges uh, in, in, in uh, Spark streaming system uh, uh, design. So consistency is one such uh, important challenge. Second important challenge is the fault tolerance. For example, the D stream which is uh, given to a particular node and uh, the node can fail also. So, so and uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, computation will never return back its result. Hence, the consistency again will become a major problem. So fault tolerance, it has to be fault tolerant. So fault tolerance uh, system means that it has to be computed not at one uh, D stream, but at multiple D streams at different locations. Uh, so that is uh, called replication factor. So uh, replication factor will uh, will ensure you the fault tolerance. Similarly, an out of order data uh, that we have already given an example. These are some of the challenges uh, in, in the, the implementation. Now there is a thing which is called a structured streaming. Uh, is is uh, that means uh, when you, as far as the programmer is concerned, without going in details how the actual computations are performed, as he has to do uh, programming with the help of high-level APIs. And uh, high-level APIs are being supported with with, with, the, with the with the same uh, configuration, same abstraction called data frames, data set, and uh, SQL. Same as in streaming and in batch uh, computation is done uh, that we have seen. So it is also allows the structured streaming about the event uh, time uh, processing. And uh, uh, that means uh, the native support for working uh, with uh, out of the order and the late data arrival. It has to it has to also work with that. So so structured streaming handles about that in a, in a structured format. So end-to-end -end exactly once uh, 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 notion uh, abstraction is being allowed in the transactional both in processing and the output behavior. So structured streaming, we are not going in detail, but simple basics we are going to see it is supported with a, with a data structure which is called an unbounded table. So uh, when, when the, the data, uh, when the live stream, uh, data stream it is coming, it is being divided into the batches and every batch will become the row of a table. So as the new batch comes, so it becomes a new row of a table. So this particular table is called an unbounded. So once it is once it is stored in the once it is stored in the in the in the in memory table, this is called uh, unbounded in memory table. So that computation can happen on these kind of table. So so important 
uh, concept here in this in, in the structure this evening is uh, the providing the uh, uh, unbounded table. Now, uh, structured streaming, uh, uh, spark streaming also handles the, how how it handles the date arrival uh, data. For example, here you can see that the data uh, uh, stream of data which is coming and uh, maybe some some data uh, is uh, being late. So so that means uh, when when you operate uh, when you perform the transformation that is. Uh, 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 that is Windows window uh, group aggregation. It automatically will handle this uh, late uh, handling of the data that we have already already uh, discussed. Now we are going to see the use case uh, of uh, this is Spark streaming. So Spark streaming can be used to build uh, data pipelines. So data pipelines uh, is uh, shown in this example. It's a it's a normal pipeline. It's a pipeline connects from one entity to another entity uh, uh, here in this case. So, so if the data is generated out of the source, for example, it is the sensor which is generating the data. Now, uh, this particular data has to be uh, to be sent to the to the processor. That means uh, on the Spark cluster. Uh, so, so, uh, so this particular uh, connection is called a pipeline and uh, to, to ingest the data uh, from the source to the uh, to the uh, to the computation is called data pipelining. So uh, so your task is to build the data pipelining with the with the, with the systems so far we have seen uh, and to create the composable uh, streaming applications and uh, using the best tools uh, which are available. For example, there are various data uh, ingestion uh, tools, Kafka and uh, SDFS and so on. Uh, so we are going to see them uh, uh, in, in the mini projects or maybe the later part of the class that uh, for every application you have to build the data pipelines here in that case. So today we are going to cover this small way uh, how to build the data pi pipeline. So your task here, we are going to take the task to create the first data pipeline with there are two methods. One is called structured streaming, and the other one is called the Spark streaming. We are studying the Spark streaming, and the Spark streaming. If you see in this particular figure, the Spark streaming is uh, 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 is here. The Spark streaming is is here, and uh, and uh, uh, this is Spark streaming runs uh, over Apache core. Uh, so, Spark streaming is an API uh, uh, which is which extends to this uh, Apache uh, Spark core. Uh, whereas uh, stream structured streaming, if you see structured streaming, is an API uh, which runs over Spark SQL. So, uh, so that means whenever you generate a query uh, through the Spark SQL, this uh, structured streaming. Uh, uh, can be uh, can be so so Spark is streaming so is structured streaming is a part of uh, Spark SQL uh, system whereas uh, Spark streaming is uh, the standalone API of the Spark core. So uh, uh, there are different flavors means a programmer or the application designer can choose uh, to to uh, to build the application using the structured streaming or using the Spark streaming. So if you are using Spark streaming, then it is called a batch processing or a windowing applications or window based applications. So we are going to see uh, both of them and then we will move forward with the Spark streaming uh, for a moment. Uh, with, with, with the one use case. So if you see the example, uh, the difference between the structured streaming and a Spark uh, streaming. So you can find that uh, uh, Spark streaming uh, uh, which is uh, API of uh, Spark Core uh, it starts with creating a, a streaming context, and uh, here you have to specify that context that refresh date is uh, seconds, and uh, it will create the Spark context with a with a name streaming uh, context which is with the name CPX. And uh, uh, this particular uh, data ingestion uh, you are using the socket uh, text stream. And uh, you have to specify the local host from where the socket uh, 
the I address the, and its port number and uh, these uh, data streams will be stored in, in the lines and uh, these lines uh, will become the, the D streams now this particular uh, lines which is a D stream now you can apply the, the flat map operation which will split the line into the words so the word will become now the, the discretized streams and there you can apply various transformations such as map uh, so, so you can count uh, the particular word in, in a particular text and uh, then you can do a word count of in, the, in a particular live stream uh, how many times that word has appeared and you can make a, make a word count. So this is the typical word count program which you can write in the Spark streaming. Whereas uh, in a structured streaming also you can do but uh, you have to because it is uh, built over uh, or uh, Spark SQL. So you can see that uh, uh, it will have its own uh, different uh, notions. Uh, the, the program uh, size, uh, you know, it becomes bigger in the structured streaming compared to the Spark streaming for doing the same task. So you can do the same task either through uh, uh, structured streaming or, spa, uh, or Spark streaming, but the Spark streaming is more uh, systematic, more organized, and small. Uh, simple to write the program, so therefore, uh, this particular Spark streaming we are going to consider for the uh, in the further discussion. So, if you compare this uh, structured streaming and Spark streaming, so as far as the time is concerned, here the time is fixed to the micro batch streaming uh, interval. So, time you have to define uh, in that sense, and whereas in the structured streaming, time is abstract. So you have to give, uh, you have to, uh, you have to give the processing time, you have to define the event time and so on. So structured streaming is more abstract uh, compared to the Spark streaming which is the Windowing based, uh, 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 based programming application. And execution is concerned, uh, here the execution is done on a, on a fixed micro batch. And uh, whereas in, in a structured streaming, you have to you also have the fixed micro batch or, or best apart micro batch or, or, or the continuous. Uh, as far as uh, is abstraction is concerned, here in the Spark streaming, you have an abstraction which is called a discretized stream, the D stream or RDDs, which is in with the Spark code. Whereas uh, the structured streaming uh, contains the abstraction which is. Uh, uh, supported by abstraction which is called data frames and data set. Data frame and data set we have already studied in Spark SQL. So, uh, uh, so now we are going to see the uh, uh, typical hands-on uh, on this technology uh, with, with a simple use case. So here the use case is uh, sensor anomaly detection. For example, in a smart city you have deployed the sensors and sensors are detecting the anomaly whether there is a fire, whether there is a pollution, whether there is a road accident. So those sensors, uh, a different type of sensors are deployed at different locations. Uh, they are, their task is to detect the anomaly and, and report it. Now if let us say you, you link those sensors with, with the, with the real-time analytics, uh, uh, so you have to build a pipeline. So sensor anomaly detection pipeline is an example here uh, uh, of uh, this application is built. So uh, as you see that this particular sensor data uh, is, is being captured using ACA uh, sensor data multiplexer that is data ingestion and uh, then it, this data ingestion will be given to the next stage that is called data exploration that is the structured streaming, data preparation uh, that means it will find out uh, or you have to uh, define the event time, windows, uh, watermark and Kafka if it is and Kafka sync it is. Or uh, if it is a data exploitation means it is a Kafka source or SQL operations if it is uh, structured streaming. And the next stage is uh, online model uh, that means on these uh, is, um, batches of uh, this live stream uh, sensor data will be uh, will be performed uh, the online model creation uh, out of the training uh, uh, using some machine learning uh, model uh, it will it will it will perform the training that is on the fly data is coming it will directly be used for the training and uh, and prediction as well as. Uh, prediction. So, so RDD programming you have to do it. 
uh, that is whether you have to perform local uh, operations or you have to do a distributed uh, uh, way uh, and you have to use the Spark SQL uh, or you are using so so and that perform the anomaly detection that is uh, you have to uh, compute it over the control stream that is the Spark streaming uh, or the structured streaming. So it's uh, the same application that is the anomaly detection you are performing on uh, whether the spark is tubing and structured, it, it, it will look like in this manner. So after uh, we sensor data multiplex are using uh, local process, it's, let us say that ACA. Uh, uh, and uh, ACA uh, data will generate, the data source out of the data sensors uh, will be generated and Kafka will be the data ingestion, it will capture it and it will supply, provides to the to the, uh, uh, to the either the Spark uh, structured streaming or to the Spark streaming uh, for computations and getting the insights and then will be stored uh, or it will be shown as uh, So uh, uh, here you can, uh, uh, you can see this uh, particular, this particular uh, exercise uh, has the following objectives uh, that uh, it will take the raw sensor data stream and apply the structured streaming for data exploration and it will calculate the moving average uh, and uh, it will show the moving average over the plot uh, whereas uh, on the other hand if you are using a spark uh, streaming then also you can you have to build an anomaly detection model uh, using machine learning uh, you can train it and you have to build a model on the fly and then this the anomaly detection control systems and can deploy the model so when a new data comes uh, as it is coming so you will be able to detect the anomalies and you can also visualize the anomaly. So this uh, is, 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 is the objective of uh, this particular discussion that, uh, that you can, uh, so, so you can connect uh, so, so there is a, a, a proper uh, mechanism uh, to build the pipeline once the pipelines are built uh, automatically you can connect uh, the data ingestion systems whether Kafka or some other uh, data ingestion and uh, once uh, you have you have defined uh, that then you can start uh, building the, 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 the model building program uh, to train on uh, the, the D streams uh, that is using uh, uh, Apache uh, Spark uh, Streaming or de streaming that is shown over here. You are building the de streaming uh, and uh, you perform the train uh, training uh, on it based on this de streaming, uh, which uh, is nothing but the uh, batches of the input stream is uh, used for the training. And uh, for these uh, RDDs, uh, for these. Uh, this team you have to convert into an RDD and uh, using the, the map operation you have to perform and uh, so so you have to find out all that uh, entities uh, which is designed to desire to calculate the moving average uh, here in this case moving average means uh, you have to you have to maintain the mean and when the new data comes you have to add to the mean and you have to, you have to change the, the average so at every point of time you have to maintain the moving average so whenever there is a query uh, so you can you can uh, or uh, when there is a deviation from the mean uh, when, when a new data comes you have to report as an anomaly uh, so so you can also you see in the here that you can predict uh, you can apply the, the prediction on these uh, different values uh, so so predict that you can you can predict. so with this uh, let us stop here at this uh, point if you have any questions you can ask and uh, I request Rohit and uh, the team uh, Rohit uh, to, to prepare a nice uh, uh, assignment and uh, give it to you so that you can make a practice uh, So if there is no other question, uh, so let us uh, stop at this point. So thank you uh, all.